It is Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Kal halal yahawah b'ashem yahawah shai b'ashem ruqah kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson Esau Edom, calling himself the white man. He's controlled opposition. And so we go around these scriptures over and over, and we're going to do it again. On and on and on. There's no autonomy. There's no such thing as free will. Even Satan himself, we looked in a previous lesson, we're going to go over some of these scriptures. It, the Most High and his son, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai are their names. They have total control as Satan, the spiritual demon. He tells Esau, Edom, what to do after he's received instructions himself from the Most High. We read some of these. Let's read uh, Job. Just get a couple of these scriptures here that highlights this point and then we want to speak about the awesome presence of our power in the earth. It's not to be compared with any. Let's get the Job 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered and answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking from walking up and down in it. Who said you can present themselves? We look these words up. It means you're of a lesser status, presenting yourself to your superior, to give an account for what you've been doing. What have you done? You've been given instructions. You were told what to do. So he came, he was amongst the sons of God because he is a son of God. He's a spiritual demon. Functioning on the left-hand side, reporting to his power, our power, Yahweh. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? What have you been getting up to? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the Most High, and escheweth evil, as avoid evil. So we know the rest of the story was like a bet between the Most High and Satan. Go and test out my servant. See if you can get him to lose his way. And we know the story well, the point we're making here is there's no such thing as autonomy. There's no one in the earth who is doing what they feel like without, outside of the power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's get uh, Isaiah. Let's just read that one, get that out of the way. Isaiah 45 and 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. There's no one else who's doing it. Let's get Psalms 17, 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So who is this wicked? Is this man thinking he is all things to all men. He's Esau, Edom. He's taking his instructions from Satan, who in turn is getting his instructions from the Most High. But this man is being deceived, thinking that he's all by himself, that he is actually in rulership. He's been referred to as many things. Let's get something else he's referred to here in uh, Jeremiah. So he's the sword, which was his blessing. Maybe we'll read that in a moment. Jeremiah 50 and verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon, which is America, Babylon the Great, become a desolation among the nations? Ancient Babylon, it, it, there's people living there, millions of people near in Iraq. 
This is Babylon the Great, Sodom and Egypt, the daughter of Babylon. So we're trying to join the dots up. There may be somebody new joining, uh, listening to this and wondering what's going on about. Because Cain in the garden, this goes all the way back. His name means Kayan, a dagger. No doubt what he used to attack his brother and murder him. And Esau's blessing when he came back in the reincarnation. Let's hope you understand that. In Genesis 27, his blessing is the sword. So it's the same spirit that came back getting their instruction from Satan, a spiritual demon. Let's get, I often read this. We're linking the dots. We're trying to join it up together here for those who may be new. Genesis 4 and 15, the Lord said unto him, therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. What mark is that? It's leprosy lest any finding him should kill him. So he's marked out, everyone at that time had uh, melanin in their skin color, and this was withdrawn from this man, marking him out. He's untouchable, he's bouncing around the earth thinking that he is God, saying he's this and that with all his artificial intelligence, his GMO foods, he's ruining the whole planet because he is adverse. That is the spirit that is within this man. We're just running through here. And so this mark of leprosy, when he came back in the reincarnation as Esau, Aishatwa in the ancient Hebrew, what does that mean? Wasted away is he. What about him is wasted? Is how he looks. Esau, Aishatwa, is leprosy of the skin. Blonde hair and blue eyes is not a thing of beauty, but these things, these people have the control of the narrative, control over the whole earth has been given to them as Job 9.24. So they're able to make out that this uh, leprous look, everyone should seek after it. So Hebrew Israelites, who, who we are, the most favorite color with these wigs and weaves and what have you, that women wear is blonde because they're trying to emulate who they see as a person with the power. They're trying to look like him. You've got people using their dress code, these suits and ties and, and what have you. That is not the way of the East, which is where we come from. We are the true children of Israel. They're calling us Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. This is Genesis 36 and 8 speaking about this man. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. We're joining the dots in this lesson. We're just quickly running through these scriptures that we use often go to Malachi 1 and 4. We're speaking about this man calling himself the white man. He's controlled opposition. No such thing as free will. He's been told what to do. And a most high has total, total control, whether it's on the right-hand side with righteousness or left-hand side with these evil spirits. He's in total control. The scripture tells us, I create good and I create evil. Whereas Edom, this is Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, saith we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. And this has happened repeatedly. This man was put out to grass, so to speak, put out in the caves, and he's come back. He's been allowed to come back and set up in the Renaissance 13th, 14th century. And so he's back in power again. So he said, and it's happened before, build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. This is righteous anger. This man is being set up and he doesn't realize it. Let's get Psalms. Did we read Psalms 8? Remember if we read that one, let's get it. Psalms 8, and let's just get a few verses here, 3 and 4. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? This total control, is his consideration is what matters. You don't get to do what you like, when you like. 
Psalm 147, let's go from 2. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Look how many stars there are. Our power knows them by name. Just look up at night when there's some clear, uh, when there's no, uh, no clouds. Look how many stars there are. And our power, he knows them all by name. He made them. He healed the broken heart and broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their name. Look at that. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek, he casteth down the wicked. These are buzzwords, the weak are the Hebrew Israelites, and we know who the wicked is. Cast them down to the ground. That's what's getting ready to happen. No autonomy, no free will. We're under control. We're, if you like, with robots being maneuvered into position. This is the most high's movie. If you don't like your role, it's tough luck. Go and start an argument with the ruler, with the, what am I looking at here? The director of the movie. Let's get to Matthew 10, verse 28. And fear not them that, this is red letter, Yahushai speaking, fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell are not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father he's the one who's determining and listen to verse 30 but the very hairs of your head are all numbered fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. Yahweh giving this assurance as to the importance of his people. So we don't fear no guy. We don't care what they have to say. We fear our power much more. Isaiah 40, let's just get 25 and 26. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. There's nothing beside him. No power beside him. They all get instructions and I'm being moved, maneuvered around, if you like, like the puppet on a string. Even this so-called white man with all of his power and his might, with his technology, getting ready to force people to take his under-the-skin technology. If you want to join in to the new digital currency, you're going to have to. This is First Samuel 2. And let's go from six. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor of the, out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. See, he is in total, total control. He will keep the feet of his saints who are Hebrew Israelites and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. Your own power is not gonna get you anywhere. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king. Who's that? And exalt the horn of his anointed. It's Yahweh Shai. And his people 
it was following the like manner. Nothing, just nothing moves without the Most High say so. Nothing, including Esau, Edom. He's set up for this junction. It's just a quick thought here. And hopefully, I'll come back with another lesson later. This man is set up for destruction, bouncing around the earth, thinking he's God himself. He's got a God complex. But I want to stretch the lesson beyond where it needs to be. You may listen to Esau, Edom. This white man is controlled opposition. Shalom. Till the next one. We don't fear no guy.